Sword and sorcery is one of the oldest setting aesthetics to exist in all of fantasy, emerging from the era of pulp fiction novels in the 1920s or so. Sword and sorcery evolved from the weird fiction genre, a mishmash of fantasy, horror and science fiction popularized in pulp fiction by magazines like Weird Tales and championed by authors such as H.P. Lovecraft. As a result of the efforts of Robert E. Howard, who created the first recognizable sword and sorcery stories when he wrote about Solomon Cain and Cull of Atlantis. His subsequent development of Hyperborea became the groundwork for sword and sorcery as a whole, although it wouldn't be named as such until the 1960s. As one of the oldest fantasy genres, sword and sorcery has a far-reaching impact on fantasy gaming. Many of the author's Gigax denotes as inspiring the creation of Dungeons and Dragons were writers of sword and sorcery, whilst Greyhawk itself has a strong sword and sorcery motif to it. What is it sword and sorcery is a hard genre to define for many, it overlaps heavily with, if is not the same as, heroic fantasy, focusing intimately on a singular protagonist or a small group of protagonists, and concerning itself with personal issues, rather than the grand, sweeping, world-shaking threats of high fantasy. Sword and sorcery is larger than life and action focused and usually characterized by the anti-heroic nature of its protagonists, they are almost always motivated by matters of self-interest. Many sword and sorcery protagonists are aimless wanderers of life, drifting from battle to battle driven by little more than whim and chance. Some, Wikipedia, have defined sword and sorcery as a mixture of fantasy, horror and mythology with historical romance, action and swordplay, the most famous of the sword and sorcery worlds ever published, Hyperborea and Zathique, are a lost primeval earth and a far-flung future earth respectively. Likewise, some argue that a true sword and sorcery setting is distinctly low magic. The iconic vision of a sword and sorcery protagonist is a driven, grim, hard-bitten warrior who stands against fiends, aberrations, dinosaurs and evil mages armed with nothing more than grit and a trusty sword. Others argue that this isn't so. Zathik featured magic or even spell-wielding protagonists fairly extensively. Fritz Leiber's protagonist the Grey Mauser had originally trained as a wizard before becoming a cell sword, and Elric was a demon blade wielding warlock from a highly magical world. Sword and sorcery tends to shamelessly incorporate pulp era science fiction into its ostensibly fantastical world. Frazetta Man was born in this kind of setting. Tentacled monsters out of the Cthulhu mythos make frequent appearances, although rarely to the bleak outcomes Lovecraft envisioned, and dinosaurs often stand in for dragons. 80s Sword and Sorcery vs. Classic Sword and Sorcery during the 70s and 80s, and to an extent even the 90s. Comedia generated a number of series that resemble sword and sorcery in many ways, but diverted from them in very clear ways. As noted above, sword and sorcery is often thought of as a low fantasy subgenre, with only human protagonists and magic being restricted to long-winded, esoteric rituals mostly aimed around summoning beings from other planets and dimensions, assuming it even works at all as opposed to being largely smoke, mirrors, psychology and trickery, but these shows and series presented a new kind of sword and sorcery, one that mixed in elements of high fantasy without fundamentally losing their sword and sorcery feel, wizards were introduced with strong magical powers, even protagonists might use magic, and non-human protagonists were also featured. There are arguments that it is sword and sorcery isn't actually sword and sorcery at all, but its own new genre but nobody has yet come up with a satisfactory name for them. Examples of Ata's sword and sorcery include Masters of the Universe Thundercuts Golter and the Golden Lance Thunder the Barbarian Conan the Adventurer. A rare 90s example, Backlash sadly, sword and sorcery has long fallen out of fashion. Partly it's to do with changing cultural mores. The mystical orientals and savage black-skinned cannibals that so frequently appeared in sword and sorcery tales of old are now a huge no-no. More importantly, sword and sorcery became synonymous in the 70s and 80s with cheap, cheesily written, low-grade, derivative fantasy. If it was advertised as sword and sorcery, usually it'd be a sclockfest. 
Although fans strive to revive it, Sword and Sorcery has become heavily stigmatized, especially amongst the arrogant and pretentious lot that are fantasy literature critics. Sword and Planet a subgenre of Sword and Sorcery. Sword and Planet is essentially what happens if you blend science fantasy and sword and sorcery together. The basic principles of sword and sorcery or heroic fantasy remain intact, but the setting is on an alien world, usually revolving around a human protagonist mysteriously transported to this strange place. The emphasis is on the fantastical, the alien races may not resemble the standard demi-humans, but fantasy trappings such as the use of swords to fight or fantasy armor for decoration remain prominent. Any alien technology is strictly to make the world feel more otherworldly or serve the needs of the plot. Edgar Rice Burroughs kicked off this genre with his John Carter of Mars stories, but perhaps the most recognizable example today is the many stories of Flash Gordon. TG Examples Dungeons and Dragons was originally built around this aesthetic, and its strongest in advanced Dungeons and Dragons and retro clones based on it. Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea is an add-on D1E retro clone that aims at replicating this aesthetic. Conan the Barbarian has had multiple tabletop games based on his world of Hyperborea, including one using add-on D rules and one using D&D 3E rules. Greyhawk is effectively a sword and sorcery setting with a medieval Europe backdrop, instead of the more iconic Iron Age backdrop. Wilderlands of High Fantasy is a venerable third-party campaign setting for original Dungeons & Dragons, a contemporary of Greyhawk, except with more Iron Age and Dinosaurs and Hawkmen. Dark Sun is a sword and sorcery setting with traces of sword and planet, drawing equal parts inspiration from Conan and from John Carter. Primeval Thule is a third-party campaign setting for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition which takes place on Hyperborea between the ages of Cull and Conan. Despite that, it includes some more iconic d and like the presence of demi-humans and spellcasting classes. Vast Cavia is another third-party campaign setting for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition deliberately constructed with a aesthetic. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedlier.co.uk, one stop shop for Kumja models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and dnd 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbeardiercontact at gmail.com.